look, preseason overreactions, here, here's mine. It's not really overreaction, but look, the Wizards are who they are. You could expect this type of effort and this type of sloppiness from them, whether it's regular season or postseason. I mean, preseason. Postseason? That team's never making a postseason. Never making a postseason. Regular season or preseason. But I think I think the takeaway, if you watch this game tonight for the Knicks, my main, main theme is possibilities. You saw possibilities tonight of the Brunson Towns pick and roll potential. You saw possibilities of what Ananobi and Bridges can bring when they get active and they start putting pressure on the ball, guarding point guards, twos, threes, fours, whoever it is. Tonight, it was it was possibilities, man. And they got a lot of work to do. It's a long road ahead. But, man, especially that Brunson Towns two-man game, boy. Oh, man, I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to that all year, bro. I'm looking forward to it all year. The two-man game between Brunson and Cat is going to be lethal, whether it's pick and roll, pick and pop, give and go. You just saw just a glimpse of it. And Cat didn't even have it going, man. I mean, he was missing yeah, he was shot early. after shot. He was building a brick house in yeah. the first half. So the fact that you still ended the game with 25 points, you still see that, you know, something that we saw Randall do last season was still get to the free throw line. He was able to draw contact when 10 of 11 from the free throw line still was impactful in the game in that way. Yes, it's the Washington Wizards. Can't really take this team seriously. But what you want to see is that it's not just one way that he's looking to score, right? When you look at Carl Anthony Towns, you want to see that he's capable. You want to see that he's capable. I, I'm watching. The Yankees are up 3-2. That's what Yankees, we need to see, it, CP. That's what Yankees we need to see. Stan, look, Stan coming through, man. Let's go. Go ahead, man. But look, we just need to see that Cat can just score in a multitude of fashions if he doesn't have his shot falling tonight. Threes yeah. weren't happening. Even shots around the rim were not falling for Cat. But still, getting to the free throw line is very important. But yet, you see Brunson that pick and roll, getting some nice dimes, easy, easy buckets for Cat just to get back in a rhythm, man. Ah. Oh. But it's looking great. There's still it's still a lot to see, man. There's still a lot to see. I know it's preseason. The starting five, man. I need to see. Like I like I said, I'm trying to temper expectations because one, it hasn't even clicked yet. Two, yeah. we got to see it against the top tier town. We played the Hornets. We played the Wizards. It's an 82 game season. It's going to be a lot of sledding, right? Yeah. But I, it, it, it's looking pro- it's it's looking promising so far, man. Yeah. Offensively, defensively, though, as you already know, wing stop. OG Bridges. They I mean, you can even throw Hart into the mix, man, because good Lord, at the end of the second quarter with like, what, two, three minutes remaining, you see you get a stop by Bridges. Then you get a stop by OG. Then you get a stop by Hart. Then you get another stop by Bridges. And when they're locked in, man, they're locked in. To the bench, no deuce tonight. Deuce, um, sick. They said, I think he said they, he was under the weather. So, you know, I saw that news. I'm like, colic time, you know. Come back anytime, Deuce. Obviously, the be- he was he was missed, especially early in the game. But mm-hmm. you got to see extended Kolick minutes. Fifteen points for the creator. Six of ten from the field. Five dimes. Him and Huck Porty got it popping in a little two man game, picking up from summer league. Knocked down a couple of nice jumpers. Kolick is looking smooth out there, man. Looking good, man. I like Kolick's game. Like I said, man, yeah. I, it's just like how calm he is as a rookie. Look, I get that it's preseason. I get that I'm getting pushed back and saying, Alex, how can you just say for for what he's doing as a rookie? It's only yeah. two games into the preseason, but I mean, we saw even part of this during summer league. He's just playing with a level of poise that you just don't necessarily see from a point guard as a rookie. It's one of the yeah. more difficult positions to play in the league. And, you know, for many players, it takes years for them to get comfortable, whether it comes to playmaking, knowing where to find teammates on the floor, knowing what shots you should be taking so that way you're not disrupting the flow of the offense. And it just seems like he's just naturally fit in to what this team is trying to do. And I guess that's partially due to the fact that, you know, being at Marquette for not just one season and actually warning the position, you start to see like maybe there is some value for guys who, especially at that position, spend a little bit more time in college and they can just, you know, easily acquiesce to the NBA and know how to be that facilitator for a point guard I'm talking about. I think you could really say that for a lot of positions, but especially at the point guard position, just for it's like like the quarterback in the NFL, right? You just want to make sure that someone can run your offense smoothly. And I think for Kolick, look, man, I – if he doesn't start, if he not not necessarily start, if he doesn't get into the rotation at the beginning of the season, 
I expect him to get into the rotation somewhere during the middle of the season and earn a spot and solidify it just because yeah. it's just, it's difficult at this point to just continuously watch him during the preseason and say, we got to keep the, We're going to leave this guy on the bench where we need as much playmaking as possible on the floor at all times. Yeah. I, I think it'll work itself out, but you know, he, he's got to get past campaign first with campaign had a good night tonight. 14, five of 12 from the field, four, or six from downtown, four dimes for, for, uh, for campaign. Had it going tonight. You know, campaign had it going tonight. I, I just think, I just think Tibbs will go with the experience first and allow Kolick to gradually take that spot. That's just my opinion. I, I think he'll he'll let Kane Payne kind of, you know, it's his job to lose type of thing. I mean, we saw this for Evan Fournier, so I'm not going to <laughs> – I can't even argue that point because we literally saw this for yeah. Fournier and Grimes. Yeah. And then it's just like – I just wonder if it's going to be like the difference was because Fournier literally couldn't play defense and wasn't a consistent knockdown shooter. Right. Rhymes at that time gave you more consistent defense and then had his moments of being very impactful on offense, which is why you were able to make that trade off for, for this. It just seems it's a little different. I, it just feels like Cole really has to outshine campaign yeah. because campaign is a fine enough backup point guard and it's just it just to your point like yes Tibbs is going to rely on the veteran presence but it's not like cam can't offer you know as a bench player when no one's looking for the most consistent guy possible that's why you're on the bench so like for yeah. what he provides it's just like Kolek would have to outshine that so and if he can that's great i just True. think it's, i just i'm just saying it's just different circumstances <laughs> Unfortunately for the simulation, Oof. he was nursing an ankle injury tonight, so was mm. limited in action. But the hive had to be born tonight, and you know the hive I'm talking about, man. Good God. We may even go into overtime. We may even go into, like, hour number two tonight because Huck Porty Hive said they are here and they would like to be heard tonight. Huck Porty Hive. I think Huck Porty Hive had made a case tonight, man. Wow. We are there. I think, you, right. I think they made a case tonight. He was good. He was good tonight, man. He was active, active hands, setting screens. You know? Huck, Huck Porty, uh, he's a hustler, look. man. He's, he's he's a hustler. That's one thing about him. Like, he, he takes no plays off. He, he goes all out, man. I mean, it's... I feel like it would be a little overstatement to say it's night and day, but it really is night and day watching those two play. Just yeah. because you just look, even before Sims exited the game, you just see him get lost on defensive assignments, positioning. Um, I mean, you had what was it you had Alex Sar just running down the lane, cutting, and just gets an easy basket over him. And it's like, mm -hmm. how did you lose the guy? You're you're supposed to be the rim protector. Like, why are you not looking? down the middle of the lane like what's happening over here yeah so Huck Porty comes in sets better screens grabbing boards as you mentioned active hands like he's just doing everything all the little stuff that you need to do just to get minutes and part of me is just like I could see him overtaking that just I get once again I get that it's preseason yeah but just those things alone it's so important in like a Tom Thibodeau defense that you like offer that if you're not going to be a lethal offensive threat. And so Huck Porty, you know, I get once again, it's the Washington Wizards. Yeah. A lot of people go good against the Washington Wizards, but just those minor details alone, you could see, you could start to see, you could, you could kind of see like maybe there's a possibility where he just overtakes Sims in, in the pecking order for center rotation, but it's still early, man. Like I need, I need to see another consistent game from Huck Porty like this before, uh, you know, we really uh, start, yeah. you know, going over the ledge and just start saying, yeah, this is this is the answer right here for the backup center. Sounds like you're hating on him a little bit. Am I? Sounds like you're hating. Cole am I hating or, or am I just trying to keep realistic expectations? What's the difference? Huck Porty Hive. Air this man out. He's not a believer. Air this I'm man. showing the replay right now from the Chase Bridge. Here's Kolek to Huck Porty. Drop where the dime. Where, where, where do you stand on the Huck Porty Hive? You were bought in, huh? You're fully bought in. You're, you're, you're no, I, th the guy, no I, th I think, uh, you know, Sims got it. You know, 
it's his opportunity. It's now or never for him. Like he's he's got to show and prove because this guy's hungry, man. Mm-hmm. And if Tibbs if Tibbs needs to go two minute pinch, I don't think, I you know I don't think he's like a world beater. But based on what they have right now, he could be like a little you know like a little bootleg Earl Barron, man. He he reminds me of my guy Earl Barron a little bit. Earl Barron, okay, yeah, yeah. Anybody in the chat remember El- Earl Barron? I was a president of the Earl Barron Hive. You know? I, I, I know where Huck Porty Hive has been. I've been there. Earl Barron Hive, bro. Huck Chua with Precious and Ariel, <laughs> says Marcus Miller. <laughs> <laughs> so, Terry. <laughs> so, everybody in Hulk, the chat wants to Here you go. Here yeah. you go. Uh, shout out to John D. Hulk, Hulk Porty over Sims. <laughs> Yeah, what's good? You guys, you guys hear me? Loud and clear, man. How you been, man? Mm-hmm. I'm good, man. I'm good, man. I'm excited about this team, man. Uh, we'll get into it, but Legends Lounge, I got Glenn Rice, right? Glenn Rice. Mm, I, want to I didn't like Rice, man. I, I like Glenn Rice. I like Maurice Endower. Okay, Maurice <laughs> oh, Endower. Man. All right, he had a hive. I like, <laughs> I like Maurice Endower. Yes, and the he last did. one is like, I think this guy should actually be on the actual team, but if you're not going to put him on the team, obviously bring the walking bucket, Alonzo Trier, in the mix. Um, that, the, 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 those three for sure, at least especially ISO. But um, ISO, so yeah. I mean, listen, we can use some scoring punch. We're a little, we're a little, we're a little weak on the bench. But um, listen, man, just a quick take about the game. I'm extremely, extremely excited. It's probably the most excited I've been as a Knicks fan uh, since I've met UCP. It's been like seven years or whatever. I didn't have, you know, the balls moving. Uh, no one's dribbling the ball between their legs a hundred times. Three three pump fakes and a step back jumper from within a, the the three point line. Balls moving. Yeah. Uh, we can stretch the floor. Cat looks good. He makes quick decisions. He gets the ball. He makes a quick decision. Rather, he's a good passer. A more, an underrated pass. I didn't know he had that kind of passing game, but he looks like he pass. He makes quick decisions. He's more efficient. He's taller. He's better at basketball in every single aspect of basketball. Julius Randle. Um, so that also is important. My only take is that it's going to sound crazy. I'm starting precious, bro. I'd start precious at the four. Okay. So he can play defense and, and, and take the fouls that cat would get. You keep Josh Hart in his natural position off the bench, sixth man spark energy with deuce off the bench. It gives you a little bit more balance. I feel like, I feel like you have enough shooting on the floor with Brunson, Mikel, OG, and Towns, you have enough shooting on the floor where you could have Precious play just for the first six minutes of the game, right? Obviously, you close with the Jock Hart lineup. You, you you play Deuce more than Precious, whatever the case is. But I think that's going to be better for the balance uh, of the team. So I just wanted to hear your opinions on that. And um, uh, I'm excited, man. I, I, I think the Knicks, for the first time in my life, I think, maybe not my life, but in the first time in a while, like we actually, we actually have a chance. Like there's an actual chance. I, I don't know how much of a chance, but there's a chance that we can actually win. So I'm extremely excited. So I'll okay. salute to you guys. Appreciate it. Appreciate it, man. Ari on the check in. Rate that call in the chat, man. One being trash, five being facts. 